when you think of rahu and ketu because we are doing these studies right here is one more tip for rahu and ketu rahu is just the head it wants to go out there and get stuff whatever it is interested in and wherever which your house it falls in and you always got to look at the birth chart more than anything else other divisional charts are simply how you interact in a specific area of your life the navamsha will be how you do it with spouse dashamsha or the 10th division chart is how you do it at work and so on and so forth birth chart always governs so even if you just look at rahu and ketu for only the birth chart you are good to go because that's who you will be anyway you interact with different areas of your life in a different fashion in a different style but you are still you so rahu and ketu one more tip here i discovered this morning is rahu is just the head and ketu is the rest of the body it's how the classical test text depicted right so rahu being that endless drive towards moving from one thing to another in the form of senses because let's look at it all your senses are focused in the head all your identity is focused in the head really do people look at your body they look at your head first right so rahu is that head rahu is the one who looks itself in the mirror each day you are looking at your face you are looking at rahu itself so it's nothing to be made bad of really speaking but you got to understand this you got to really understand this this is like psychology 101 on the other hand ketu is the one who is detaching you from everything else it's got the hands but it doesn't have a head so it's always looking for identity grabbing on to whatever things it can get its hands on but discarding it once again because it is not the head but it wants to derive something to have for itself this is one of the reasons why you will find a trend of rahu is the one who is called as one who wants to hold on and let go whereas ketu pretends to let go but wants to hold on to there's the clue right so wherever ketu falls that house usually you have those things but you don't take it you don't give any importance to it ketu in the second house might give you wealth all the time but you're not having any attachment towards it it disconnects you as energy as your form of ego energy that you have it disconnects you from that means you don't give much importance to it you see this is how it works rahu on the other hand is the want is the basic root of our desire i want that stuff i want that car i want that woman or man i want that house i want that promotion any number of things so you go towards it may not necessarily achieve it by the way this depends upon many other things in the chart as you know but this is how you basically analyze it okay one more thing i want to leave you with before we get into the study now middle portion of it is the basic principles which i leave in every video yeah if you are seeing this the second or the third or the 27th one because we will have to cover this in 27 parts every nakshatra right so it will be a long series and i suggest you watch each and every one of them even if your rahu ketu is not like that because you know someone your friend your family who is having the access so if you have seen the middle portion you can skip it you can fast forward it to the portion where i start with the pie chart okay start with the exploration start with the rahu ketu axis you know i'll take care be safe so number 1 the classical characteristics of rahu and ketu as described by the classical vedic literature okay what is rahu and ketu these are the north and the south nodes of the moon found by the virtual points which are the intersection points between orbit of the moon around the earth and orbit of the earth around the sun so basically if you take two eclipses ellipses it will form two intersection points yeah so these two intersection points are called the north node and the south node they are virtual nodes although they behave like planets and we shall see why in a minute so who is rahu the symbols are there like a horseshoe and the reverse horseshoe right this is typically how it is portrayed in western astrology so i'm using the same symbol here rahu is mythologically depicted as the severed head of a demon symbolizing constant endless insatiable hunger and appetite 
be it sensual or physical, yet it is unable to hold on to or grasp it. Rahu is the one who constantly wants something. Think of it as a live head only, not the body. Okay? So it can't hold on to anything or be satisfied even if it gets that thing, since it has no arms or body or stomach. Right? Just a head which is alive. This gives Rahu the title of Bhoga Karaka or meaning one who is after sensory materialistic pursuits. So think any earth sign for example, they want sensory materialistic pursuits. Or think any of the signs literally, whatever they are after, Rahu wants that and wants that very badly and goes after it with everything. This is an energy in us by the way, it is not a planet, it's a virtual node, but it will behave like a planet which we shall see why. So it is unable to satisfy that hunger or hold on to anything even though it gets something. It wants to move on to the next and then to the next and then to the next. This is why Varahu is also called as the guy who wants foreign things, not of the native land or not of what the person is natively born in. Why? Because of that insatiable hunger. There is always insatiable hunger to go after one thing after the another without being able to hold on to it. That's Rahu. Ketu, on the other hand, is mythologically depicted as the severed body, the remaining half of the demon, symbolizing constant, endless, insatiable search for identity. It is looking for the head, but it doesn't have a head. So it is looking for that identity. Everybody's identity, ego is centered in the head, what you look like, right? It is also seeking for true purpose, sense of self. As a result of this, it tries to hold and grab on to everything that it can find its hands on because it has got hands. Ketu has got hands. It's trying to hold on to everything but it releases immediately because it knows that's not the head. It's like trying to grasp on to everything thinking, oh, I want this or I am this, I am that, I am this. Not getting any identity because it's not finding the head there. Since it has arms and walks everywhere, it goes around through life, walking from place to place, people, situation, circumstances, but not knowing who or what it is. It doesn't have a head. This is why Ketu is referred to as Mokshakaraka or the seeker's path, the one energy in us which seeks something. That's why Ketu is called the Mokshakaraka. Now this is the classical interpretation. Okay. Now we shall see how this plays out in the modern interpretation. Very important to connect the bridges. Now here you have the Rahu Ketu general characteristics as modern interpretation. This I have borrowed from the book uh, Light on Life by Robert Sobala. Excellent book. I have put it in the community tab if you want to go through it or purchase it and read it. I seriously suggest that. Okay. The North Node of the Moon, Rahu. What does it become because of the characteristics which classically is told in the texts? What does Rahu lead to in the modern context? Rahu is responsible for originality, individuality, independence, insight, ingenuity, inspiration and imagination on the positive side. Because Rahu and Ketu both love to explore foreign stuff, things out of the box, things not taught by tradition, Rahu and Ketu will be anything but traditional. Okay? Think of it as something foreign to the culture, to the way you are taught things. Looking for original stuff. If there is one singular force that is responsible for creating everything that we keep modernizing, so to speak, thinking out of the box, it is this. That's why it's important to pay attention to this. Okay, back to this. So Rahu on the downside becomes leads to confusion, escapism, neurosis, psychosis, deception, addiction, vagueness, illusion and del delusion. This is the downside. Now how this plays out and why we will have to see individually in the charts. We shall, we shall see that. Okay, Ketu. Ketu, the guy with only the body, no head there, is gives us the feeling of universality, impressionability, idealism, intuition, compassion, spirituality, self-sacrifice, subtleness, on the positive side. On the downside, it can lead to eccentricity, fanaticism, explosiveness, violence, unconventionality, amorality, iconoclasm, impulsiveness and emotional tensions. This is on the downside. This is what it plays out and Rahu Ketu is typically an axis like it is shown over there, right? Rahu Ketu, let me remove myself for the time being from that axis, okay? There you are. So you see it as an Axis, okay, 180 degrees apart. 
and it can play out in any one of the opposite houses it can play out in 1 7 2 8 3 9 4 10 etc etc it can be, you'll see that later but this axis becomes a definition point of where in your life in your different houses are you looking for these two aspects and they are always opposite to each other as you can see okay to stand opposite to each other so if it plays out in second house it detaches itself from the eighth house if rahu is in second house it ketu will be in the eighth house you see what i mean and so you will bring the eighth house aspect with these aspects shown here second house with that aspect shown over there of course it plays out with something called as dispositors we shall see that next now, if you go to a traditional Vedic astrology, they will go on and on endlessly about dispositors. What the hell is a dispositor? It's an invented term by the Vedic astrologers. It has no meaning of its own. It shows the disposition. And what's the story on this? Rahu and Ketu both are enemies of the sun and the moon. This is the basic principle. So it has the solar aspect and the lunar aspect. The solar aspect is called the dispositor. And the lunar aspect is the nakshatra which gives the entire characteristics and the ball game of Rahu and Ketu. Okay? The solar or the dispositor means since Rahu and Ketu are enemies with the sun and do not have a full identity of their own. Remember, it's a virtual node. It is not a planet. They both do not have any planetary characteristic individually. So they take on the identity or the disposition of the lord of the zodiac sign that they sit in and borrow the attributes of the house from which that lord sits in suppose mercury is in the third house okay and rahu sits in the house of mercury somewhere else so it will borrow the attributes of mercury sitting in that third house and bring it to that particular house wherever rahu is sitting in got it nakshatras since rahu and ketu are enemies with the moon and do not have a full identity of their own individually they take on the shade of personality nakshatra is essentially a shade of personality it's coloring of a personality it's seeing the world through different colored glasses that they sit in and borrow the nakshatra traits and attributes which color their propensities so rahu and ketu do two things at the same time at the solar level it goes with the dispositor that is all of the planets physical planets mercury mars venus sun moon so on so they take on the attributes of whichever house they are sitting. If it sits in Rahu sits in Cancer, it will you have to look for where Moon is sitting, which house, and what it is doing there, and even the Moon nakshatra. If it is sitting in Leo, Rahu in Leo, that means it you have to look for where Sun is sitting and which nakshatra and which house. So it will bring those attributes. That's the way you have to analyze this. Okay. Let's see some aspects of which house they play in and why. Now there are some vital aspects that you keep, need to keep in mind when evaluating Rahu and Ketu because this is important for, especially for people who are sort of looking for self-development to understand where they are coming from. If you are not interested in changing yourself, this entire channel is useless for you. But if you are the one who is interested in knowing what is happening in my life, where do I need to go, what are my talents and you question these kinds of things, excuse the noise somebody is drilling about. So, then you need to understand these aspects. Now that's the typical chart, Indian chart. And house numbers are depicted as 1, 2, 3, 4, up till 12. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha is there. And I have stuck Rahu Ketu as possible axis on the 1, 7. That is Aries and Libra, that is the top and the bottom. So either it can go to house number 1 or 7. Rahu Ketu can be reversed, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Or in 4 and 10. Now 1, 4, 7 and 10 in Vedic Astrology are given very vital importance because they are the foundational aspects that define who you are, that define how you operate in life, throughout life. So these become crucial. Why? The 1, 7 axis effects, if Rahu and Ketu fall on there, has a direct effect on your self and other concept. 1 and 7 is self and other. How you re relate to yourself and how you relate, look at the world around you as others including the spouse because seventh house is the house of the spouse but also others so how you develop through life and how you develop a relationship with others so it defines who you are in a very broad sense one seven axis of rahu ketu 
the four ten on the other hand fourth house being the house of the mother tenth being father fourth being home tenth being career you see this has a you know all kinds of implications which define who you are the four ten axis has effects on the heart versus mind mind wants to, is the one who goes out there in the world and being used in the career right you dissipate your energy as the mind in the external world heart is your home your home center where you feel comfortable home is where the heart is that kind of a thing so heart and home is affected by this rahu ketu axis again rahu and ketu might be reversed rahu might be in the fourth ketu might be in the tenth or vice versa same way with one and seven but these are the vital relating aspects of rahu and ketu now what about the rest of the houses now rest of the houses are called trikona or kona in sanskrit right these are the things that come and go in your life they let be second house third house fifth house sixth eighth ninth eleventh and twelfth these are the things that come and go in our life through life through your entire life these are things that are added into subtracted from us but this is not us one four seven and ten is us everything else is secondary which revolves around you as life comes and goes all other axes depict what attachments and detachments we have towards different areas of our life that's all it is they are less significant in terms of rahu and ketu when compared to 1 7 4 and 10 axis of rahu and ketu please remember this when you evaluating you just have more propensity towards one part of life and less towards others rahu is attachment ketu is detachment rahu is expansion ketu is reduction and they stand opposite to each other all this right now let's take the cases one by one now we come to the revati chitra and hasta axis of rahu and ketu i have stuck in the axis of rahu ketu here in the shaded portion as you can see in the pie chart and now we have rahu in revati you got to remember one principle in general when rahu or when ketu fall in devgunas they generally dilute their propensity to create bad stuff maleficness okay they become a little more driven towards upward energy seeking more divine purpose and towards spirituality rather than materialism you got to remember this is in a general rule all the devgunas revati is a devgana and rahu here will want to explore the finer aspects of pisces pisces being first as a rule like we said before is to look for the dispositor or who is the ruler of pisces jupiter so rahu sitting there you got to look for where jupiter is sitting in your chart and what it is doing and also remember the cusp of the ascendant which i have said in the earlier video if the cusp of the ascendant is near jupiter this will become even more prominent energy okay so we are looking at rahu in revati meaning first the ruler of pisces jupiter this is the first order of examination on the other hand the opposite axis of rahu which is ketu is going into the sign of virgo which is ruled by mercury now you will see a general trend as we go through this entire 27 nakshatras is the opposite houses are usually in dispositive function enemical to one another enemy in this sense just means they work they don't like each other's type of functioning they work from opposite ends of the spectrum it is more about duality than of good and bad you got to get rid of this concepts of good and bad everything just is okay so i have put a list table list of dispositors there now we are talking about jupiter versus mercury why jupiter is the ruler of pisces so rahu's dispositor in this case being jupiter okay through the entire revati <clears throat> and through the entire chitra and hasta it is mercury let us the relationship mercury is neutral towards jupiter however next row there you see jupiter does not like mercury intellectual capacity i'm translating this intellectual capacity is not opposed to wisdom an intellectual person is not opposed to wisdom however wisdom a wise person will look down on intellectual people and say you don't know 
anything much, do you? You're just pretending you know a lot of stuff. You're just using your intellectual capacity of the mind rather than rising about into the wisdom layer of it. We rise in layers, okay? Step by step. Nothing is like instantaneous in this world. Hey, even we took nine months and troubled our mothers to get here, right? So, you know, you lose that impatient form. Be a little more patient when you see this. It's not about quick YouTube shorts here. This is about study, okay? Right, let's get into it. So, this particular axis, the fourth pada of Revati and the second pada of Chitra, that's where this axis now rests, okay? First of all, this is a Gandanta point and you can see my video on the transformational points. The last two padas of Revati and first two padas of Ashwini fall between Pisces and Aries. So whenever fire and water meet each other, fire sign and water sign, in this case Aries and Pisces, they meet at this point, they become transformational points. And especially if Rahu and Ketu meet here, it really becomes a transformational point. For example, let's see. Now it's in the last Pada of Revati, which means it is 20 degree, 26 degrees, 40 minutes to the end of Pisces, 30 degrees. That is Pisces in natal going to Pisces in Navamsha. We just focus on the natal for the time being. And in Chitra Nakshatra, it goes into the Artha Pada. Also note the Moksha and Artha. It will give you clues. It falls between Artha Pada, which is 26 degrees, 40 minutes and 30 degrees of Virgo. So it is Pisces going to Pisces and Rahu sits there. Number one. And it is Virgo going into Virgo. So it's like Virgotama. Okay, so of Virgo, right? So this is as Virgo as it can get and this is as Piscean as it can get. This is true Pisces nature and that is true Virgo nature. And Rahu Ketu is sitting right on this axis and it is axis of transformation because fire is very close to water now, okay? Right, so what does this give us? Next level we will go to the coloring, the nakshatra. What does Revati stand for? Revati stands for prosperity, the one who wants to be prosperous because it is ruled by Jupiter and now it is exalted in Pisces going to Pisces. So you got to really look at Jupiter and where it falls, whether it's exalted, debilitated, which house in this case because Jupiter will become very strong governor for this person's life. Okay, Rahu is sitting there and it is sitting in Revati. So it wants the themes of Revati. If you want to look at the 27 Nakshatras playlist, it's everything is there. What are the life themes of Revati? This Rahu will be obsessed about those life themes of Revati because it is sitting there. However, it will gain a little more finer attribute because Revati is a Devgana and Rahu becomes a little less materialistic obsessive and little more spiritual in nature, little more higher knowledge kind in this because it's a Devgana. Chitra on the other hand is more grounded, it is more Rakshasakana, it is more of Tamasic nature, it wants to create, it is ruled by Vishwakarma, so it wants to create things, Chitra Nakshatra. So this person has a push and pull between the themes of Revati and the themes of Chitra and the dispositor or Mercury where Mercury is sitting in and Jupiter where Jupiter is sitting in. So it will have all the qualities of Mercury wherever it sits in. It will be intellectually driven on that, but it will take that for granted. Okay. Whereas on the other hand, it will want stuff with wherever Jupiter sits in and it will go towards that. This is the axis of push and pull we see here. And one is Artha, means they want real grounding stuff. They are all very grounded people, Chitra, because it wants real hardcore practical things of life in Virgo, especially in Virgo. Now, on the other hand, you can see Rahu going towards Moksha, means Rahu here wants a liberation from this. What am I doing all this for? It was seeking higher knowledge and this is the highest exaltation of Jupiter. Pisces going into Pisces. So Jupiter will want to hunt that higher form of wisdom wherever it is sitting in, whichever house it is sitting in, wherever it's looking at the fifth and ninth aspects. Yeah. Now let's see the next pada. So now we move to the next pada, which is the third pada of Revati 
in Pisces and in the Rahu stick in there as you can see in the Pi and then on the opposite side the Ketu is in the first Pada of Chitra as indicated in the tables there so you can see the degrees and minutes of each one Revati as well as Chitra right so now that white arrow that you see Rahu and Ketu is shuttling the energy between these two which assumes quite a bit of different signature because now in the Namamsha we are talking about Aquarius to Leo opposition that means opposition from Saturn to Sun okay Saturn ironically is the son of Sun okay but still it opposes us this is the classical father-son opposition if you want to call it that it's like a stereotype if you want to call it that so Aquarius wants to do everything for others and Sun wants to do everything for itself it shines by itself it's about ego wanting things for self and wanting things for others this is the opposition between Aquarius and Leo typically speaking right and yet you also got to check in Navamsha where the ascendant is transforming because that's the main important thing if ascendant is in Gemini and, and in natal chart birth and Navamsha it becomes something else then all the houses shift right you got to take important note of that but anyway let's focus on Rahu and Ketu it is still Jupiter versus Mercury as I spoke of in the previous one right However, in this case, in Navamsha, it becomes about others because Pisces, water sign goes into air sign. So it becomes more from a watery energy into the airy energy, meaning going from emotion to the mind. And it's all about others. On the other hand, the Ketu, what strength it has in Chitra goes from Virgo to Leo. It's going from earth to fire sign. Earth to fire sign is a funny transition because earth and fire really don't mix and so is water to air. So this is a little bit of a tricky opposition in going into Navamsha. But we are talking about natal chart so it still governs. Okay, This is still the same. However, later through life they may start thinking or changing in different terms. They might become more mental in nature. Rahu might become, I want a mental satisfaction towards this. Rahu wants stuff, remember? So it wants mental satisfaction. Chitra, on the other hand, falls in the Dharmapada of Chitra, meaning it wants to, f it feels the energy, it feels the passion of earthly nature because it's all about Vishwakarma, it's all about architecture, it's all about refinements of earthly nature. They will start becoming this kind of a person later through life. This is evolution of the soul through life, folks. Okay, and in Aquarius, it will become all about let me see how I can bring this to others. Rahu in Aquarius does well because it wants to gain popularity from the masses, especially if your dispositor Saturn is sitting in the 11th house and in its own sign, or if it is exalted, see the exaltation, debilitation video then it becomes all about giving to others, becomes all about giving to masses. This can be a powerful driver like a CEO material of a company who is always focused on how I can take my company forward. They have the passion, they have the drive, they have the energy of Chitra they can create, they have the energy of uh, Kama Pada of Revati which means desire to acquire and become popular in some sense. Okay. Now let's see the next one, the second Pada of Revati. Now, within the second Pada of Revati, because we are going anti-clockwise and Rahu is there, sitting there in Pisces. So again, the dispositors, Jupiter, always go first to the dispositor, where it is disposed to. Rahu wants to think like Jupiter in this, in this case, when it is passing through Revati, all four Padas. And Ketu, on the other hand, comes in Hasta, the last part of Hasta, the Moksha Pada of Hasta. So I have marked my arrow there in both the tables so you can see the degrees and minutes. Yeah. So now we are talking about Pisces going into Capricorn, water going into Earth in Navamsha and in the Artha Pada. So here the Revati becomes more of what means do I need, what kind of resources materials become focused on material acquisition for like means to an end 
it wants to achieve something but it needs the resources for that the man the materials the money you name it everything the circumstances so it's looking for means pisces going into capricorn because starts becoming more grounded in later in life so capricorn here would want to achieve things and remember even the dispositor changes in navamsha the dispositor of this particular rahu will become saturn that's how the energy shifts okay whereas in natal it was all about jupiter so moving from jupiter in energies to saturn in energies maturity through work through life but is on the other hand hasta it's going into moksha pada virgo going into cancer meaning ketu here which is resting in hasta will have this stuff of emotional grounding because hasta is very grounded emotional talents because hasta wants to speak communicate think of the nakshatra themes always nakshatra themes also play here revati is the prosperous one hasta wants to do things with hands it's a communicator emotional sort of communication can be a good theme here because cancer is ruled by moon so in the navamsha the dispositor changes to moon whereas before it was mercury so you are saying a transition from intellectual thinking to emotional feeling transition from communication hand skills in the natal chart it will be all about mercury in kind of traits creative intelligence intellectual logic capability but now you're moving into the emotional body later in life okay now let's see how the last pada fares the first pada of revati which goes into the third pada of hasta let's see that so there you have it the last pada or the first pada sorry of revati okay and white arrow is marked there now rahu is sitting there and the degrees and minutes you can follow in the table and it goes into the third pada of hasta so now we are talking about the rahu energy being in dharma pisces going into sagittarius dharma sign is always the fire sign right so you will see dharma artha kama moksha have covered this before will always be respective fire earth air and water signs anyway so it is going from sagittarius and dharma to kama meaning here hasta has more of a strong air energy gemini is all about air so in the navamsha virgo goes into gemini both are ruled by mercury so mercury dispositor will still be the same but you got to see where it is placed in which house because the ascendant shifts according to navamsha so mercury might have changed its position although virgo and gemini are ruled by each other and virgo is a higher form of mercury as compared to gemini so it's like descending from more higher exalted form of mercury down into more refined form of air gemini is the beginning point of mental analysis so now ketu is there means this person later on in life will develop highly refined analytical skills ketu is there but they will take that for granted and rahu which wants to go into sagittarius claim the wisdom sagittarius is ruled by jupiter again you see the trends here you, everywhere you have to see patterns natal and navamsha rahu is having the same dispositor pisces and sagittarius at the same time natal and navamsha ketu dispositors are also the same you will find these kind of patterns everywhere in vedic astrology that's what's beautiful about it everywhere it's a very pattern oriented you got to approach it like a detective you know you must have read detective novels so you approach it from that perspective and study like that then it will become interesting don't take one thing or the other or one thing to the exclusion of all the rest of it this is the mistake most astrologers i see make they just see this one part like oh no tunnel vision you know yeah, oh, i want only this forget that that doesn't matter this doesn't matter life doesn't work that way life is all inclusive you got to study this like a detective okay like a cop so 
later on in life this person goes into very jupiterian energies so in the navamsha and with that ascendant you got to see the dispositor of rahu in navamsha where jupiter is sitting that's where the wisdom and life path of this person will head towards that's what rahu wants to achieve understand rahu ketu just want to achieve they have some talent ketu has some talent it wants to achieve but it takes it for granted this is the thing you got to watch for don't make such a mistake use your talents and rahu wants to go after things wherever it is pointing towards so think of it as an arrow ketu going towards rahu but you got to take the talents of ketu to move towards rahu that's the life lesson in every rahu ketu chart okay next we shall see going towards uttra bhadra pada and where it leads to the next nakshatra because we are turning anti clockwise Take care. Be safe.